White, Sandy Wiley. I have a very important message that I want to get out today about how important a psychologist or therapist's role is in a patient's life. Often not, a patient comes to therapy with a broken heart. Now, a broken heart, you don't want to shatter that it's already broken. The patient is putting their heart in their hands and handing it to you, right? It's not like going to a doctor for a broken arm or a broken leg. A broken heart is a horrible, horrible pain to carry. It's a horrible, cumbersome, um, it's the most excruciating thing to live with. Believe me, I know. Um, my heart had been broken over and over again in my childhood. When I pleaded with my mother to stop beating me and stop swearing at me, and she just laughed at me in scorn. With my four-year-old son, the day I went to check, you know, to wake him up for his morning breakfast, and he was in bed stiff with his eyes rolled back in a coma and two years in the hospital for him never to recover ever again from brain damage from meningitis my heart has been broken over and over again so when i w went to a psychologist i'm looking for help not to be re-traumatized not to have that psychologist break my heart yet again how many times can you shatter something think about it if you break a vase if you drop a vase and it breaks into a few pieces you can glue them back together but if you keep breaking the same vase and shattering it in more pieces and more pieces and more right pretty soon there's going to be so many little p fragments of pieces that you're never going to be able to get that vase back together it's going to be impossible there's just too many pieces right? If your heart gets broken once into two, you think of that base. You can glue those two pieces together and you just might have a thin crack. Maybe if it gets dropped and broken again, you can glue those pieces back. But if it keeps happening again and again, like it did with me being sexually abused by psychologists, there's just too many pieces now to ever put me back together again. It's like Humpty Dumpty sat in the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again because he had just completely shattered at that point. And that's how I am. And I am that way from abusive therapists. Now, I want to talk about clear and concise, consistent boundaries. Those are very important. Sex and therapy never mixes, ever. There's no exception to the rule. Never, ever. And the therapist needs to lay the groundwork in the beginning of therapy. Now, I know therapists, you know, they think they're helping people sometimes by, you know, pouring out an abundance um, of care in the beginning and that makes a codependent relationship <laughs> I wrote a LinkedIn newsletter about coyote pups <laughs> coyote pups are adorable and if you see them out outside and you fill them food because they're so cute <laughs> right and then they keep coming to you every day and you throw out more food and they're growing up they're not learning how to hunt right they're not learning how to kill and eat you know, animals outside, they don't know how to do that because you're feeding, you're feeding them. You're doing it maybe because they're so cute and adorable, right? Like, oh, look at them. Oh my God, they're so adorable. I'm going to pat them and put them in my lap like Dick. I sat in Dick Geist's lap. Oh, let me, let me hold her in my lap. And oh, isn't this cute? Isn't this exciting? Da, 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 right? Give them this abundance. And then... The coyotes grow up and now they're big, big wild dogs. <laughs> they're not cute little pups and they're coming out, your, they're coming outside your door 
and they are demanding food. And now you're saying you can't open the door without a pack of coyotes. And like you, now they're too much, right? Like, I don't want this. Go away. Go away. That was Dr. Richard Geis. But who laid the groundwork for the patient to become dependent on you? The doctor. It's just like with those baby pup coyotes. If I kept feeding them and they never learned to hunt on their own, Say they lost their mother or something and they you know they didn't have a mother and i kept feeding them and then now they're all adults and they're, they're right outside my door and i can't open my door and they're, and i'm saying this is too much they're too demanding but who is the one putting out the food for them i didn't teach them how to take care of themselves right give a man a fish and he eats for a day teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime, right? Those those little pups, now, now we have two losers, right? We have me who's frustrated and aggravated, and I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to feed them. I'm done. This is too much. They want more and more and more. Of course they want more and more and more. They're not cute little puppies anymore. They're big grown dogs. I can't do this anymore. I can't be given these full-grown wild dogs food. So now... I'm frustrated and aggravated, and I'm, I'm done. I'm fed up with them, right? But now they're a nuisance to me. What became, what became cute and playful, like a little child having a toy, is a nuisance, right? And now those, those full-grown dogs don't know what to do, just like the patient, like me. What do we do now? I mean, we relied on this person for food. We don't know what to do. We're going to starve. You know, so they're going to be banging at your door. You know, see, it's a lose-lose proposition. That's what I'm trying to get out there. You know, I'm trying to educate professionals and patients alike that maybe it's nice in the beginning, you know, to get all that attention, you know, Especially if you're, you know, narcissistic and, you know, have a big ego like Dr. Geist. Oh, wow, you know, this attractive woman, she wants to curl up in my lap. She wants to lay on the floor and stroke my arms. She wants to grab my body parts. This is exciting. This is, she calls me at 2 a.m. on my vacation, you know, and wow. In the beginning, it might be exciting and fun. And a good stroke on your ego. But what happens? Then after a while of this, you get fed up and it's a nuisance. And then you hurt yourself and you hurt and you trauma re-traumatize the patient. So you have to have consistent and concise boundaries. You can't waver like this. You can't, you know give a patient all this attention call anytime you want any time of the day or night on vacations weekends just call five over five hours a week you come in my home you come in my workshop you can lay all over me and touch me everywhere and you see and then all of a sudden you say oh i'm burnt out you burned me out that's what he said you burnt me out you're too demanding you're too intense. You want too much attention. Then you put it all on the patient, right? It's just like me blaming the adult coyotes if I kept feeding them as pups and saying, oh, they're a nuisance. They're a pest. But who was the one who set it up? Who was the one who made them that way? The doctor is always responsible. They take an oath, do no harm. Do not re-traumatize the patient. The patient is already coming to you, handing you their heart that's broken. And what do you do? How dare you? How dare you to take a hammer and start breaking it more? So now it's broken into a million pieces that can never be put back together, ever. And this is what happened to me. I turned into an alcoholic at 50. I never had an alcohol problem. I never heard of 
people my age turn into an alcohol. Usually, if you're an alcoholic, it, it it shows up in your 20s or you know when you're young, right? You can't handle alcohol. Not at 50. I drank all my life. I mean, I drank occasionally. I might have had a beer or two on the weekend. I never drank during the week. Never, ever, ever. Never drank vodka. You see what I'm saying now? I'm an alcoholic because I handed Dr. Geist my heart and he shattered it. Then I went to Jim, the other psychologist, because Dick made no more time for me. He breadcrumbed me. Instead of five hours a week, he gave me 10 minutes a week. He breadcrumbed me. <laughs> you guys know what breadcrumbing mean, right? When you give less and less and less, like little breadcrumbs. But you still keep the person there. You just give them enough to feel like there's something there, right? But he breadcrumbed me. And then I went to Jim, and what did he do? He had sex with me. He told me all his problems. It was a role reversal. Instead of me... Talking about my problems, he told me his problems, and then he, and then he took my body and he took my everything out of me. In between him and and Dick, I'm destroyed. I will never trust again anyone ever. I will never go to another therapist ever ever again. My life has been shattered, totally shattered. But I didn't. Well, I, I want to share that with you so you know, you know, what happens when you don't have clear, consistent boundaries. See, I'm not really coming on here to say, oh, feel sorry for me. I'm coming on here to warn you, both patients and professionals alike. Patients, you have to be, you have to look out for this. In the beginning, just like those puppies, it's irresistible, right? They're always throwing out the food, like throwing out the attention, you know? I care about you. You're special. You know, they're throwing that out. And you eat that up like those little puppy coyotes eating that all that food up. But run. If you hear that, run. Because even though they're feeding you all that, you know, nice flattery and attention and care, someday they're going to shatter you. And you, and you don't want to be on the other end of it. Believe me, like I am. You do not want to be on the other end of it, you know. And it always starts out with, I care about you. You're special. I love you, you know. That's how it starts out. And more attention and more attention. And, you know, that... I'm just trying to warn people that without... Why do you think they have ethical codes out there? Why do you think they have licensing boards out there? I mean, what you can read about all the ethics. One one day, I read I read practically the whole not the whole thing, but a good chunk of it. You know, they have laws out there. You know, against this stuff. You know, about multiple relationships, about self disclosure, about boundary crossings and boundary violations. Okay, they have these laws out there for a purpose, to protect the consumer. You are the consumer. So, I just want people to be aware of this, you know. You need to have consistent, concise boundaries as a professional. Think about it. You can't be, you can't allow patients like those coyote pups to become dependent on you. That's not your role. Your role is to help the person help himself. That's the psychologist's role. Not for the person to be dependent on you and can't function without you. Just to pad your wa wallet and stroke your ego. Okay? And you re-traumatize the patient all over again. And now they have all the unsolved problems they went to professionals to begin with. Plus you added all these other problems. You see? Instead of having... Um, being broken in two or three pieces, you're shattered into a million pieces and you can never be put back together again. Don't be the hammer if you're the psychologist and shatter someone who hands you their heart. You're not helping someone, right? Unless you 
teach them to help themselves. You're not helping someone to put the little, you know, goodies out there, you know, the flattery, the, the attention, all that stuff. That's not helping them. It might feel great in the beginning to the patient, like, oh, wow, I can't wait to go to therapy. Oh, he says I'm special. He says he cares about me. Don't you ever believe it. I've had it done to me one too many times. It's just going to shatter you in the end, okay? Have your little radar antennas out, you know? If you go, I'm not going at all because I've been two decades in therapy and it just shattered me. Each therapist took a hammer and shattered me more and more and more until now I'm a million pieces all over the floor and, you know, now I have to, you know, deal with the mess that they caused. That they caused. So, remember, clear, consistent, concise boundaries, you know. Teach the patient to fish. Don't hand them the fish, okay. You hand them the fish, they won't know how to fish. They won't know how to take care of themselves. And what's going to happen to them, you know. You're going to be frustrated and aggravated that they're always coming to you. You set the groundwork. The doctor's... You, as a psychologist, set the groundwork, and then now you're burnt out. Now they're too demanding. Now you shame them. When you were the one who set the situation up, now it's too much, too much on me. So let me shame you and make you and belittle you and make you feel like you're the cause of the problem. You're, you want too much attention. attention. You're too demanding, right? And then they're aggravated and like want nothing to do, you know, nothing to do with you. They were the ones who set the situation up. So I hope this teaches a very important lesson. And I'm going to keep writing books and I'm going to keep giving video talks about it until, you know, I feel that enough people are listening. Because at this point, I don't. I really don't think enough people are getting it, you know. I really don't. A couple of people have said things in the comments um a couple that's it very very little i don't really think i'm getting food to the masses and this is very very important for me to get food to the masses because i don't want what happened to me to be repeated with anyone else because i can't sleep at night i have se severe panic attacks severe i have heart palpitations i feel like i'm gonna pass out I, I'm an alcoholic, so I'm much worse now after being in therapy than I was before I even went to therapy. A hundred times worse. I'm a different person. Therapy has destroyed me because of the psychologist. So this is my message, and I hope that I will con I will continue on this journey to help people see like these other people's flaws so they can learn and not repeat it and that's all i can do and that's all i'm going to keep doing okay take care